Einstein once said, I want to know God's thoughts in a mathematical way. Einstein wanted an equation, perhaps no more than one inch long, that would encapsulate all physical laws. The beauty, the majesty, the power of the universe into a single equation. Hi, I'm Will Cummings, and today we're going to be exploring one of the most abstract and complex, yet fundamental branches of science, quantum theory. Now, quantum theory operates off of a notion that quantum particles, the smallest things in our universe, are able to do things at a smaller scale that were thought of as impossible at a larger scale. Today, we'll be looking at three different aspects of quantum theory. What it is, its history, and most importantly, what it can accomplish. So without further ado, let's get started. First off, let's clear up the essentials. What is a quantum particle? Now, given that they're the tiniest things in our universe, we're going to have to look at this at a smaller scale. Like I just said, quantum particles are the tiniest things in our universe. So tiny, in fact, that they cannot be broken down any further from their original state. Let's take this proton, for example. Say I were to divide this proton into the fundamental particles that make it up. I would end up with three quarks. Now, because a proton is made up of three quarks, we can conclude that it is not a quantum particle, because it is made up of something else. However, this electron tells a different story. Electrons are not able to be divided any further than their original state. This makes it a quantum particle, meaning it abides by the laws of quantum physics rather than the laws of classical physics. Now that we know what a quantum particle is, let's talk about what makes them special. Quantum particles, as previously mentioned, are able to do things within their own quantum realm that would be seen as impossible in our realm of classical physics. Now, to demonstrate one of these seemingly impossible things, let's take a look at my friend Joe here. Joe is currently standing next to the border of the state of Ohio. Were Joe to take one step forward and straddle the border, he would be existing within two states at once. This is a primitive example of what a quantum particle does. It represents a quantum particle's ability to exist within two states at once, otherwise known as a state of superposition. For example, it is possible for a quantum particle to be both a particle and a wave. This concept baffled early scientists. It even went on to greatly disturb Austrian-Irish physicist Erwin Schrödinger. In an attempt to ease his discomfort, Schrodinger took a jab at disproving the quantum theory, um, and he did this with his thought experiment. In this experiment, Schrodinger took a cat and put him inside of a box with a radioactive device that had a 50% chance of detonating. Obviously, if the device detonated, the cat would die, so there were two possible states that the cat could be in, either alive or dead. However, Schrodinger thought that if the quantum theory was true, then the cat would, before being observed, exist in a state of superposition, where he is not dead, not alive, but both alive and dead. Rodiger tried to demonstrate how ridiculous he thought the quantum theory was by comparing the likelihood of its existence to that of an undead cat. Upon further review, Schrodinger concluded that this was in fact possible in the quantum realm, and it shook him to his core to the point where he would actually leave the subject of quantum theory for the rest of his life. Now, it's important to point out that this was a thought experiment. It did not actually happen physically because, again, this is only possible within the quantum realm because that realm abides by the rules of quantum physics while our larger realm abides by the rules of classical physics. If Schrodinger ever found out that his efforts to disprove quantum theory are now used as a large piece of evidence to prove its existence, he would be rolling in his grave, well, and also not rolling. Just to reinforce this fundamental law of quantum physics, here's yet another example. This quarter represents a quantum particle. Now this quarter or quantum particle has two states, either heads or tails. And when I flip this quarter, it has a 50% chance of landing on heads and a 50% chance of landing on tails. So let's say that since this is a quantum particle as well, 
Landing on heads indicates that the quantum particle is a particle, and landing on tails indicates that it is a wave. Heads, particle. Tails, wave. And tails, wave again. So as you can see, there's two states it can exist in, but it doesn't seem like it could exist in both at the same time. However, a quantum particle can be a wave and a particle at the same time. It can exist in two states. So it's not confined to this polar situation. It can be both a particle and a wave and exist within two states. This is called a state of superposition. And if this quarter were actually a quantum particle, it would look a little like this. The quarter is existing in two states right now. It's neither heads nor tails, but it's also sort of both. This represents superposition and how a quantum particle can exist within two states. Superposition is not the only irregular occurrence in the quantum realm. Another example would be quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is perfectly represented by the strange case of two twins named Jim Lewis and Jim Springer. One thing that may stand out to you is that they both have different last names, as they were separated at birth, but this is where their differences end. Coincidentally enough, they were both named Jim by their adopted parents, but the similarities do not end here. They both excelled in math and struggled in reading. They both went on to have jobs in law enforcement. They both married women named Linda, then divorced their Lindas and married women named Betty. They both had a habit of smoking, they both owned the same car, and they both vacationed in the same spot at the same time of year. And this was before ever meeting each other once. Scientists love to use this as an example of nurture versus nature. However, it serves as a great parallel to how entangled quantum particles behave. So, to represent this, let's take a look back at Schrodinger's cat. In this thought experiment, we have two cats in two boxes with two devices, each with a 50% chance of killing the cats. Now, if we look at this at face value, we see that there are four possible outcomes. Either cat A survives and cat B survives, cat A dies and cat B dies, cat A survives and cat B dies, or cat A dies and cat B survives. Now, at face value, this seems like it would be the correct answer. But if these two cats represent entangled quantum particles, this is not the case. We would eliminate the possibility of both cats having the same outcome, as an entangled quantum particle would only be able to have the opposite outcome as the other particle which it's entangled from. However, this is very interesting, because these particles very often have no prior interaction, just like the twins. Now that we know what quantum theory is, let's talk about the multiple technological feats that it could accomplish. Now, we'll start off with the less extraordinary things, and keep in mind, these things are probably the most extraordinary things to be labeled as less extraordinary than something else. So, for example, the quantum computer. Fundamentally, quantum computers would be no different from regular computers, just better in almost every way possible. Many universities are currently developing quantum computers, Caltech, Dartmouth, and Duke to name a few. Regular computers operate on a binary system. Binary code is a combination of multiple yes or no questions, with these yeses or nos represented by ones and zeros. These inputs then create other possible one zero inputs until we are able to translate them into more diverse and complex inputs. Quantum computers take a different approach. Like I said before, quantum particles are able to exist in two states at once. A quantum computer uses temperature to regulate and measure the state of these quantum particles. The states of these quantum particles serve the same purpose as the ones and zeros in regular computers. This would improve so many problems we have today with computers. For example, it would be nearly impossible to run out of data or storage. The biggest problem with quantum computers is that it is difficult to regulate such extreme temperatures on a laptop or smartphone, so you might have to deal with running out of storage for a little bit longer. Now, let's get into the really interesting stuff, like teleportation. There is no question that teleportation is possible on a quantum level. I mean, electrons do it by nature. 
The challenge is applying this knowledge to a larger scale. Now, to understand how we would teleport, let's understand how electrons do it by partaking in a quantum phenomenon called quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is basically when a particle passes any sort of barrier without the sufficient energy that classical physics would indicate is needed. When a particle tunnels from one state to another, whether this is a state of energy level, location, or anything else, the transition time is nearly zero. In other words, teleportation. Now, how can we translate this to getting humans from point A to point B in an instant? Well, the most popular theory suggested by scientists is light. Electrons respond to a single photon dramatically because their mass is so small. Many scientists believe that isolating electrons in humans and exposing them to mass amounts of photons will be the way that teleportation is accessed in the very distant future. Now, you can't go over the possible technologies of quantum theory without addressing the elephant in the room. Time travel. I will be the first to tell you that time travel is nowhere close to possible now, and it probably never will be. There has never been an experiment to indicate that time travel is possible in it, nor has there been an experiment to indicate that it will ever be possible, so we have no grounds to believe that. However, if you ask, if you were to ask any leading scientist how they think time travel would be accessed if it ever was, they would tell you that quantum theory is the path that any scientist would take if they were trying to create a time machine or travel in time because classical physics don't apply within the quantum realm. Now, while this is, again, very unlikely, one in a billion to the infinite power chance that this could ever be possible in a million years. However, it's also fun to speculate about if it was possible, how it would be achieved, and we can look at real science and data to see how it would be achieved if maybe some laws of science were slightly fudged. So to look into this, I think one movie that executes quantum time travel perfectly is Avengers Endgame, and if you haven't seen the movie, this clip will give you a quick recap of how they handled it. Scott. Are you okay? Yeah. Have either of you guys ever studied quantum physics? Only to make conversation. All right, so, five years ago, right, right before Thanos, I was in a place called the quantum realm. And the quantum realm is like its own microscopic universe. To get in there, you have to be incredibly small. Hope, she's my, um, she, she was my, she was, she was supposed to pull me out. And then Thanos happened and I got stuck in there. I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. It wasn't. For me, it was five hours. See, the rules of the quantum realm aren't like they are up here. Everything is unpredictable. Is that anybody's sandwich? I'm starving. Scott, what are you talking about? So, what I'm saying is time works differently in the quantum realm. The only problem is right now, we don't have a way to navigate it. But what if we did? I can't stop thinking about it. What if we could somehow control the chaos and we could navigate it? What if there was a, a way that we could enter the quantum realm at a certain point in time, but then exit the quantum realm at another point in time? Like, like before Thanos. Wait, are you talking about a time machine? No, no, of course not. No, not a time machine. This is more like, um, so what yeah. Paul Rudd is trying to say here is that he wants to essentially quantum tunnel through time um, in order to come from one time zone to another. And he wants to do this by regulating the behavior of the quantum realm. Now, they don't necessarily explain how they do this in the movie. Um, it could be by temperature that they regulate this madness that is quantum realm, as he said, control the chaos. Um, it could be by some completely foreign idea that we haven't even come close to being introduced to yet. And that's really 
the beauty of quantum physics is that there's this sense of ambiguity to it and there's this subjective nature that really forces you to think critically about the subject. Neil deGrasse Tyson says that if you believe that you know everything about quantum physics, that is a great indicator that you know nothing at all about quantum physics. And this really shows how ever-expanding the theory is and how much it can accomplish if we continue to understand more and more about it. Now, let's take it back to the very beginning of this video where I showed you a clip where it said that Albert Einstein wanted this equation that encapsulated the entire universe, all its mysteries, in one equation. Now, we may not have that equation, and we may never have that equation, but we do have this theory. And this theory encapsulates the universe in a sense because it covers everything that binds the universe together. And since it's ever-expanding, there's so much more to explore within this theory that we haven't even touched upon yet. And if we can come to fully understand quantum theory at any point in the progression of the human race, the possibilities of what we can accomplish as a world and as a society are virtually endless. Thank you for watching.